the last time I saw Ken, I saw him alone. I mean Ken, because he'd been to the drugstore at the corner, because I'd got them onto national, uh, they were both on national health, and I think they, they were suffering from withdrawal symptoms from hash or something that they'd had in, um, I don't know where they'd been for a holiday. And I said, well, you must go to my doctor. And so he came here by himself, and the doorbell rang, and he came into, I lived downstairs then, and he sat and talked to me, and I'd never been alone with Ken Hallowell ever before. And he talked in such a strange way. I don't know if you've ever met people who are mentally ill, but once you have, you can recognize it. And when he left, I rang Joe, because they used to use each other's voices on the telephone. You never knew which you were talking to. They could... You mean they imitated each yes, other? Yes, perfectly. How extraordinary, deliberately. Oh, yes, so you couldn't, I mean, never know. But I did know on this occasion that Ken couldn't be there. So I said to Joe, the party that Dorothy Dixon had arranged for him, which was one to meet all the older people, like Emily Williams and people like that, who were very interested in him, and he had agreed to go to that with me. I said, we'd better cancel that because I think you must be with Ken, because I don't think he's at all well. Little knowing what would happen. That was shortly before? About three days. If that, I think the day before almost. I think it was a Monday and the thing happened on Tuesday.